Hey everybody, my name is JCK and welcome to Rift. Now this game is in the news, on the internet, everywhere right now. Honestly, it's taking the internet by storm. Uh, that's for a couple of reasons, but I'll get into in just a minute. I'm going to start off this video by saying a couple of things. First of all, I'm playing an American server and obviously I'm in the UK, so it might be a little bit laggy. Uh, I've not tried it while recording before, so please bear with me. And second of all, I'm really, really into MMOs. That's one of the, you know, one of the things that's pulled me towards PC gaming away from the console crowds and into uh, a greater world, I'm going to say. It's um, definitely something I'm into. Uh, Guild Wars is the one I usually play. And, you know, it's a lot of fun. Guild Wars 2 is a really good game, but at the minute it's just dwindling for me. It's not entertaining. And so, of course, I got, I've been going to, you know, the place that the casuals are going to, because that's the easiest thing to do. They're the easiest things to find. Now, Rift, why does that appeal to the casual player? It's a subscription MMO, and obviously it's just released an expansion, so why would you get into a game now? And the answer to that is, it's going free to play on the 12th of June. So, that's not very far away, it's like three weeks maybe. And uh, obviously, it's uh, going to be a very strange transition. It's always a strange transition for when a game goes from uh, pay to play to free to play. So, obviously, you guys should uh, hear me out on this. Not only is it going free to play, which is going to, you know, it's generating so much buzz, it's unreal. Uh, and I'm joining the people who are like, where, where, where's my character screen? And stuff like that. But basically, there's a uh, there's a little app you've got online that's uh, being promoted by Rift at the minute. Like, Tryon is really pushing it because uh, it's, it's called Raptor. Raptor.com, you can visit it as much as you'd like and download an application. Uh, it pretty much lives on your desktop. You don't have to have a look at it if you don't want to. But basically, when you ever, whenever you play a game, that's with like Steam or an Xbox or a PlayStation Network, it doesn't matter, it's tracked by Raptor. And what Raptor does is reward you for investing time into... I'm, I'm using my hands like it makes a difference you guys can see. So uh, Raptor rewards you for putting time into playing a game. And certain uh, companies are giving Raptor different rewards to give to players. So for example, right here I've got a Storm Legion helmet that I've got from Raptor. Okay, so this helmet, um, I got it earlier today because uh, I've invested enough hours into the game that I could unlock this. Uh, and basically you have a, like a, a series of criteria, you just complete them all, and there you go. That, that's all it requires, okay? And then this other one, that's just for getting Storm Legion. So how did I get Storm Legion? Why have I invested money? Now here's the funny thing, I haven't. Raptor's current reward system has uh, allowed for every person who's been playing the Rift free trial, which of course you can up to level 20, if you play it for 14 hours, you can pick up both Rift and Storm Legion for the grand total of nothing. I'll say that again, it's completely free. Now, why is that important? Why should I care? Basically, by picking up Rift now, as if you were going to pay for it or just getting it free from Raptor, which the codes are limited, so you have to move quickly, um, you know, basically, you're giving yourself greater, uh, greater, it's not abilities, but it's going to be like accessibilities uh, for when the game goes free to play. If you were a free-to-play player up to level 20 and you don't upgrade before the game goes free-to-play, you are stuck with two character slots, limited bank space and things like that. It's just a very difficult thing to get over because you're going to have to spend real-life money. And now, uh, real-life money is something that a lot of people don't want to spend, especially when you're trying to get into a free-to-play game. A lot of people just want to play it every so often, and that's not good for them. But, of course, if you invest 14 hours of time, which isn't a lot of time, to be honest, uh, into the game, just having Raptor logged on, uh, you'll be able to pretty much um, uh, find a way to not spend any money whatsoever because you get a free month as well. Um, and basically just play until the uh, 12th of June comes along and have extra features compared to the free-to-play crowd. So that's, you know, if that's not reason enough to get into an MMO, I don't know what is. Uh, it's not too intensive on the machine. Like I say, I'm playing on an American server so I can talk to uh, Maskey, who of course has been streaming this recently and um, watching the stream, hearing a lot of the information, asking a lot of questions, I've decided to try it out myself. And that's why I'm here today. Uh, it's all about awareness. That's what they're trying to do. By giving Raptor all of these codes, Tryon are trying to get Rift to become a more popular uh, game. And because of that, they'll have higher numbers, more people willing to spend money on the game when it actually goes free to play, which is completely understandable, and I think it's a very clever strategy. Now, um, I've been playing for not very long. Let me just check. There you go, seven hours and a half, right? How have I played 14 hours? Now, it's a bit of a bug thing, but basically, Raptor will track game time even if the game is just loaded. Like, you can leave yourself on the character select screen. That's fine. After an hour, you will time out. So, you know, you might want to keep an eye on it, but I left this running overnight. It timed out, and I got the extra hours that I needed. It wasn't many, 
So I did not like exactly exploit the system, and let's face it, they've already given away the codes. But if you're feeling lazy and you don't want to try out the game, which, you know, I would say try it out before you get a code anyway, but, you know, just have a look at it, have a play, really good. So, uh, like I say, it's raptor.com, I'll leave a link in the description, and of course I'll leave a link if you want to actually pay for Rift and whatever. Now, um, I'll show you now, because uh, I did buy the game, well, air quotes, buy the game, uh, absolutely nothing. I decided to give Tryon a company who have really really worked well on the community aspect as far as I'm concerned. Bear in mind they've only just really looked into Rift because I didn't think paying for a game was a good idea. But um, you know after World of Warcraft it's not a model I'm going to follow unless Wildstar which is an upcoming MMO by NCSoft uh, is any different. Well published by NCSoft. But um, yeah Wildstar looks really good but that's another topic completely. But yeah I basically bought this mount. Uh, this mount cost me £10, $15 if you're in America and um, mounts, you're available to have them from level 1 and uh, they have different appearances and different speeds now certain mounts that you can pay for or get from collector's editions from uh, you know the expansion or the uh, main game uh, will have 60% speed, that's their base one, it says here um, a tuned mount matches the speed of your fastest mount or increases movement speed by 60% if you have no other mounts so I've got no other mounts, that's my only one but of course it makes me run 60% 60, 60 faster only 50% because I've got Avatar Wind on and you know that that's uh, increasing my movement speed by 10% oh is it 3%? no 10% there you go and uh, yeah so I'm moving 50% faster than I usually would which is great but if I get any faster mounts it will scale up and the highest speed you can get is 150% I believe which is really really quick but you have to be level 50 now level cap that's something everyone asks when it comes to MMOs what's the level cap? Uh, in vanilla just rift it is level 50 in Storm Legion, the expansion, it's level 60. But what does Storm Legion actually bring to the table beyond this vanilla gameplay that you're seeing here, you know? Uh, what does it do for me? And basically all it does is gives you the extra 10 levels and an extra 4 souls. Now what's a soul, you might say, and I'll grab up a menu in just a second. But, um, there's only 4 classes in this game. That's another question that everybody asks. So, why am I, you know, focusing on it? That's not exactly a selling point. Four classes, that sounds really boring. But if I just go into my character screen, is it this one that I wanted? Right, okay, no, it's not that one. See, I'm new to the game, bear with me. Uh, let's have a look. Go into here, and... Soul Tree, okay. If it'll just load up, there we go. Okay, so as you can see here, I have, I have picked um, Melee. Okay, this, this over here says damage. I'm basically Melee DPS, that's my role. I've picked a warrior. But, as you can see here, I can specialise in being a champion, a rift blade, a paragon. Okay, those are three different things. But you can have multiple roles with multiple souls. I didn't want it to rhyme, but that's the only thing I could think it was going to do. And basically, um, there's all these different callings here, okay? So there's Destroyer, Pathfinder, Defender, Dark Thane, Hoplite, Slayer, Warmaster, Stalker, Shock Trooper, and Trailblazer. That's just the Warrior, okay? These are specializations that you can do. It's more than having three talent trees or whatever. A soul tree allows you to become a different class entirely. So as you can see here, Trailblazer, if you specialize in that, you'll be going into Beastmaster, Tempest, and Reaver, okay? And basically, well, you don't need Reaver, it doesn't matter, but... Basically, these give you three different trees to look into. You put points into it, and that gives you a supportive role because you've got predominantly Beastmaster or you know Shock Troopers damage. Uh, Stalkers also support more damage, more damage, tanks, tank, tank. Yeah, okay, you get it. But then there's also three other classes that have the same amount of trees, and um, they also have one extra added one for level 50s and above for every single class. Now um, they're called callings in this game. So there's a warrior calling, a rogue calling, there is a cleric and there is a mage. Now, the cleric is the pseudo-healer kind of class. Basically, um, the cleric is what you call a priest or, you know, anything else in these games. And, uh, actually, tell you what, while, while we're doing this, I'll give myself something to go up to. Q4 an instant adventure, which is the fastest way to level up I've found. But, yeah, anyway. Pick a calling. So, you know, you want it to be a warrior. So, you obviously, you get given um, a warrior um, class and then you have to specialize and you get to pick what your specialization is at level one and then you can change it as you level up so it's not a problem but uh, what am I doing? Kill Vespids, there we go right, I know I'm a bit high level but I'd rather have a little bit well, a little bit of ruffle stomping in a video rather than uh, me struggling against stuff because I'm not showing off how powerful the warrior is because I haven't tried any other classes or anything yet so excuse that uh, is this one? let's go and kill this anyway Right, yeah. Uh, every race, by the way, there is four races over two factions, like each have four. So there's eight total, and uh, they all have different abilities. Uh, I am a high elf and a lady. If you're wondering why I'm a lady, normally if I'm staring at something for hours and hours on end, I'd rather it be a woman than a guy. But if you think I'm gay, you're entitled to that opinion. But I'm not, so 
have it, I guess. But anyway, yeah, um, the callings I'm very interested in. There's um, a lot more in the expansion, like I said, and it's a very, very different approach to an MMO. Like, I've never played something quite like this. It's very dynamic, similar to Guild Wars, really. Let's have it off. There we go. Um, where are we? That's oh, over here, that's fine. Yeah, it's um, very dynamic. And it's a very interesting take on the MMO genre. I'm always a fan of it. Because I, oh, that was the wrong button. Like I say, it's been a while since I've played an MMO. It's a while since I've been uh, invested in something. But when it's going free to play, and the quality is this high, because it is high quality, there's no doubt about it. Um, every like profession, I suppose, well, every class has like a different mechanic. Warriors have these uh, swords that pop up in the top left. And what they do for you... Did I get a shield? I did. And what they do for you is basically give you um, attack power, these attack points rather. And uh, finishing moves, such as Punishing Blow and this one, Blade Fury, uh, use up these um, attack points and do extra damage. And that's basically how this one works, it's like sort of a mechanic. You do more damage the more attack points you have, and the way you get more of them is by attacking. Easy enough. So, um, as you can see I'm at full, and then if I press skill 4, I've done uh, a little attack. And it was very, very, very powerful. Easy enough. Um, so yeah. Honestly, Warrior, I do appreciate it. I haven't tried anything else, but if I can stop getting sidetracked. Whew, have a breather. Right, the Warrior, of course, you can portray anything but a healer, really. There are four different um, roles you can play in like raids or PvE dungeons. You've got um, the tank, the damage, the healer, and the support. Uh, support's normally buff-focused, so trying to help people you know, get to... Um, get more buffs, get higher stats and things like that. Uh, tank, pretty self-explanatory, damage and healer, both exactly the same. Now, um, you do these different quests all around the world and uh, you will uh, obviously get these points to spend in this doll tree and this, that and the other. You understand how it works. You click on here, you get some new skills, you put it on the bar and you carry on. That's it's basically the general gist. Anyway, if I can stop getting sidetracked, as I've just said twice. Um, whew! I can be a tank if I want to. That, that's understandable. But if I wanted to remain DPS, which of course I do, I can continue being DPS. Now, the Cleric, which is the healer one, as people would say, doesn't have to be a healer. You can be uh, a Shaman. So, uh, obviously, being a Shaman, you get to go around with uh, abilities and not as many um, healing skills. You're not as effective at one role, but you're more effective at another. So you become more damagey. And then, um, of course, you can look at the other professions as well. Not prof I keep saying professions because I Guild Wars too long. And then, of course, you've got the mage. The mage can heal if you need it to. Uh, you have to specialise in a very particular tree, but that's understandable. If I could just actually attack something, that'd be good. Uh, so, yeah, obviously you can um, do different levels. <clears throat> you can do... Blah, blah, blah. You can choose different levels of difficulty by what your playstyle wants to be. Uh, healing and tanking is far more... Uh, intensive for you and for your guild and for everyone around you than um, you know DPS is. That's why DPS is easy and takes forever to get dungeons. Which is understandable, you know? It's like every other conventional Trinity based MMO, which is fine. Uh, next up I think is the Rogue, okay. The Rogue's very interesting. Um, each of these callings, like Rogue, Warrior, Cleric and Mage, they're all defined by an armor class more than just anything else. So the Warrior wears plate armor the cleric wears mail, the mage wears cloth, and the rogue wears leather. And now you might think that's a little bit strange. Like, why, why would they separate it all up like that and not give in like, uh, other than the beast master, is there like uh, a ranger pet sort of a ranger guy with like a companion who goes around helping people or killing people and taming animals? And yet the rogue does that. So it's not just based around stealth. Uh, it's a lot different, I suppose. It's um. Honestly, it's a very strange take on the MMO genre, but I really, really enjoy it so far. Uh, it's very, very customizable. Uh, I know at the high, like the higher levels, you'll be able to see some uh, the greater, greater skill specs. I suppose it's uh, it's difficult to describe when you're not really into it, but you know I will be in the future. It's going to be something that I'm going to invest time into. As I've said, I've got plenty of time off university, and making videos is something that I'm doing as a hobby, and this will be something else that I take on because obviously it's a lot of fun. And I'm not going to turn down fun. Who's going to do that? What an idiot. But yeah, I highly recommend you check out this game. Uh, if you're into MMOs or if you're not into MMOs, both arguments exist. Come and try it out because you might get into MMOs and play a different one. Or you could stick around in this one because it's going to be free to play in a couple of weeks. So, you know, there's a lot of depth here. Um, with like games that go straight to free to play with the exception of really like Warframe, uh, it's difficult to... Um, 
difficult to find one that's high quality. And when something's been built with a subscription model, and then their numbers start to dwindle, just like the Old Republic did, um, they're going to swap to free-to-play, try to find the money elsewhere, but try to encourage more people to play the game. And therefore, it's a lot easier for us, uh, as um, a consumer, to get invested in something that costs nothing, and costs money only if you want it to, okay? And that's pretty much how that works. Now, um, as you can see here, I've been doing some uh, in adve well, instant adventures, okay? What they do is they give you a task. These are what they, this one's called Cerberum Realization. And what I'll do is I'll look around for these casks. There's one over here. If I can just get that to work. I think this is one, yep. Yeah. And so I'll destroy this cask, whatever. So you get given objectives like every quest. But these act like, uh, more like dynamic events in Guild Wars. Uh, which of course I've grown to love because you don't want to talk to quest givers all the time. And this works in a very similar way. So I'll, I'll uh, destroy all the casks, whatever I need to do. And you can get involved with like a lot of people uh, doing exactly the same objective, which is why it's gone up to four when I've only done one. Uh, these are like group things, so it makes a raid for you, and you go around, you do these events, and uh, and of course you get given progress, and that gives you gold and items and all manner of things, and a lot of experience mainly. That's the uh, one that I'm pulling forward. But there's one other thing that's the name of the game that you guys might want to see if you've never played this game, and they're called Rifts. I'm going to see if I can find one in just a second, just finish this adventure, and I'll go and find one. Give me that. There's nothing there. Okay. Uh, tch, tch, tch. Can't see any rifts at the minute. It's a bit of a shame. All right, we'll have to uh, do some more adventuring until one pops up. Anyway, Let's just kill that guy. There we go. One more cask, and then we can continue. Often, what happens is this um, these adventures take you to the rifts, which is really, really useful because rifts. There we go. Okay. Rifts are something that um, pop up randomly in the world. Uh, and you'll see them on the map and stuff, and then there'll often be like a post about them. And uh, all right, I've got to get my mountain run to this one. Away! Right. <clears throat> so yeah, rifts are something that'll pop up randomly and give you uh, like def they're like waves. You have to complete an objective. Normally, it's just kill the people that come out of it. And uh, as you defeat one, then another wave comes along. And if you defeat that wave, another wave comes along, and they get progressively harder. Now, depending on how many people there are at that rift. The, the event will actually scale, like, there'll be more people, what's this one, Amarilla, that's that one. Do we wait for him to go past? Yes, we do. I'm not sure what these are called, but these are like more powerful mobs, because they've got like a ring around their, uh, ring around this area on their portrait. Okay, I'm going to go into it then. I can't tank, so this is probably a bad idea. Why not? In the name of video, let's just do it. It's taking quite a lot of damage because there's a couple of us doing it. So as you can see, it's going well for us. We're doing good. I think we're going to do it. Like I say, it was high level, but with enough people, you would have done it anyway. There we go. Okay, so I've got this loot pop up. I can click that, and it gives me Corrupted Source Stones, which are a type of currency. So I'll keep that. And there's another one here from doing the instant adventure. And I've got another Corrupted Source Stone. That's great. Now, um, as you can see, this adventure is telling me to travel to where I need to go. So I press teleport, take me there, whatever. What I'm looking for is a rift, that's what I was talking about. Uh, they pop up randomly in the world, and they scale to how many people are obviously involved in the rift. And as more people come along, the mobs get harder, and it becomes a more interesting experience. I honestly think it's a character building one. But these instant adventures take you to these rifts every so often, so you'll get progress towards your instant adventures just by playing um, by playing the game, you know? You'll get rifts pop up, you'll get quests pop up, and completing them gives you loads of experience, honestly. Um, I can't say for the higher levels, I imagine it just takes a hell of a lot longer. I know Maskey is uh, leveling a little bit slower than me, but he's like in his 20s, I think he's coming up to 30s now. So, you know, it's um, definitely something that scales. But uh, for right now, it's definitely worth it just to level. I could go to dungeons if I wanted, but I'll leave it for now, because... I'm just having fun in the PvE environment, which is rare for an MMO. Honestly, leveling is normally a chore. And um, I'd recommend, if you're going to level... Don't... No, I can't say exactly for this one. If you're going to level... Um, hey, buddy, you're, you're frozen in time. If you're going to level <clears throat> in an MMO, do a couple of characters at once. Uh, like, get to, like, about nearly max level and then stop. So I'm going to get to just below 15 and start a new character, probably. And uh, just continue on doing that. So that I... Um, can raise two characters without finding out what the end of the game's like, so then I'm not bored for by, by thinking like, oh, well, I can't do it because it's really boring. Okay, there's a rift down here that needs to be open, and there's one up there open that's level 20. Do you want to go to that minor rift tear? 
that. So set a uh, yeah, set a waypoint that's on the map now. Get rid of that, and I'll leave this group so they're not annoyed by me. I'll just move my waypoint. What an idiot! Oh, for some reason, that didn't set one either. Hi, can you just set a waypoint right there? Thank you. There you go. Oh, why did I come off my man? That wasn't intended. I'll stop moving and you hit me, I think. Okay, there we go. See, I'm going to show you a rift. <laughs> There's a lot of depth to this game, honestly. Uh, if you want to become invested, you want to try and learn about it or play PvP, you're going to need to have a good level of understanding, which you normally only get from levelling up, so I'd highly recommend it. Uh, someone's already opened this rift, so as you can see, I wasn't here for the start of the event, but I can still get involved. Now, if I press join public group, people that are here are all going to be, you know, on this little bar. There might be more of us, might turn into a raid group if there's enough people. But effectively, what I'm doing is I'm killing these enemies, because this is a fire rift. Uh, and I know that these monsters aren't native to around here, so I'll go and find them and I'll hurt them or whatever. Then we'll kill these off. Like I said, I know I'm way too high level to be doing this, but uh, it doesn't matter. I'll take out all the mobs anyway, because uh, this doesn't seem like as much of a challenge at current, and it will work out for the best as long as they're out of the way. So as you can see, there's only two of us, which means it's not going to be too difficult. The mobs don't have a lot of health. But these numbers just change from one to two, and that means more mobs are going to spawn because it's the second wave. And as you can see, the mobs are different, but they're still the same theme. And um, obviously it's become something that you've got to adjust to. It's easy. More mobs. Yep, yeah, more over here. There we go. Let's get both of these guys. Get one of them on the blend. There we go. Oh, I dodged my attack anyway. What a shame. Okay, now we're on three because everybody's dead. And it advances very quickly if you're high enough level or there's enough people involved, okay? Come on, pal. Me and you. Finish him off. There we go. Okay, now we're on stage four. See, it's advancing very quickly. Normally, when you're a bit lower, it takes a little bit longer because you take a while to kill them. But, you know. Well, that was a waste of a skill, wasn't it? Come here. But yeah, the difficulty of this game is um, incremental. Uh, it's going to get more difficult if you don't pay attention, but as long as you're reading your quest logs, you're reading these quest tracking things, you're following all the circles, it's not too bad. Um, you can take it all into your stride. It's not too demanding, really. It's a very enjoyable experience so far. Okay. Okay. And, okay, so this has just popped up because I'm in a group, and I'm just going to greet it. And he didn't roll on it, apparently. Or did he? No, he did roll for it, but I won. Okay. So it's like an RNG uh, thing that determines who wins what. Okay, anyway. We've got stage complete on that one. But number five's here, and it's a bonus stage, okay? So if we let this... Um, <clears throat> we can let it continue, and the rift would eventually close itself when a timer pops up on this uh, disc. Which it isn't at the minute. Oh, well, it should have done. Uh, there's normally a timer if it's like a big boss, and it will seal eventually anyway. As you can see, that wrist has gone, all the mobs have gone, this guy's changed colour, and it's all nice and calm again, and I can collect my rewards. And these are the things I've got. I've got Planarite and Needing Flame. Needling Flame? Whatever. Can't read. So there you go. That's what a rift is. Very strange. Um, you collect different forms of currency. That's my gold, which you can see in the bottom corner as well. And that's my Corrupted Source Stones, which you get from doing instant events. Uh, instant adventures, sorry, and uh, of course doing rifts, and Planarite you get from doing rifts and uh, instant adventures as well. So that's basically how it works. It's nothing too taxing on the brain, nothing too difficult, but it obviously gets more difficult like the higher levels you go into. Um, there's been a couple of times where I've just died. Uh, the death system's very interesting. Uh, I would let this guy kill me, but it's not really going to do it very quickly, so I'm not going to bother. But when you die, effectively, you can every well, once every hour you can spawn on your body again and just walk slightly further away in this uh, ability called a soul walk. You move 40% faster so you can get out of an area and then respawn and then leave if you'd like. Or respawn and get back into the fray, but I wouldn't recommend it. And then other than that, you can do the whole like um, corpse running that you do from World of Warcraft. Start at a graveyard and walk back to where you died, respawn, and uh, then you've got to run away again. So that's how this all works. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. I understand I've probably been um, not very effective at describing what this game is all about. 
but uh, you know, I am a new player and I don't really understand that much about it. Oh, taking the level 18s, I didn't even realise. One of them. Hello? Hello? I press heal. Or not. Oh, I get to show you the death thing, I suppose. <laughs> okay, soul walk. So this is me moving away. It's not the corpse run one, it's a soul walk. Okay. And now here, it says my soul vitality is 90%. Uh, basically, if it drops to 0% by dying 10 times without going to a healer, um, you'll have to mend your um, thing with her and uh, it'll be okay. Right, I don't want you to get anywhere else, but I want my health to regen before I fight you. Do we have any... Yes, I have a couple of healing potions, just in case we're going to need them. Hey guys. Round two, yeah? Okay, I'm concentrating there. It's different. Gonna be different this time. Oh, died again. Whatever. I can't do it. I'll suck. I'm uh, down level because I'm in a lower level area, but whatever. Uh, hope you, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Um, like I say, do check it out. It does get difficult if you get yourself against mobs that are higher level than you, obviously. But it gets more difficult as the game goes on. This is just some of the lower levels. You might see some easy gameplay. I'm still getting into it, so I'm not the best. But um, over time, hopefully I'll get there. I might do more videos in the future. Remember, free to play, 12th of June. Get it all you can on raptor.com. Links in the description. Thanks again for joining me, and I'll see you all next time.